Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden. We're going to head up the west coast a little bit and return to a brewery who I haven't had anything from in quite a number of years actually. And it's very rare to see them releasing new beers as well. So when I saw this one come through the local and small assortments at the, the start of May, I thought, you know, you really have to review this one. So we're going to go back to Grebestad's Brewery for the second time in about three years. And we're having a taste of their milk stout today which comes in at 5% ABV. Now this is a style of beer that I really enjoy. I always think of the Riptide from Brewdog as being one of the beers that really started me off in this style but this brewery of course are more famous for the Lunator Doppelbock and that's a style that I also very much enjoy. You'll know that if you've watched the channel but they brew that beer on the uh, the first full moon of every year so you always get a different vintage of this every year I believe the one that I reviewed last time was the 2016 vintage but um, yeah it was a really nice beer and uh, these guys I think I've been told uh, do have a little bit of a knack when it comes to the dark beer so very curious to see how this one turns out like I say very rare to see them releasing new beers from what I gather so very much looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Gravestad's Brewery before hopefully I can add some more in the fairly near future I definitely don't want it to be two or three years until the next one. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Grebestad's Brewery then so Grebestad's Brewery are based in Bohuslän in Jutland in Sweden if you think about where Gothenburg is and then the Norwegian border to the north um, Bohuslän can be found about two-thirds of the way to the north um, two-thirds of the way to the Norwegian border to the north of Gothenburg, if that at all makes sense. But this company is owned by Ola Jonsson, who's also involved in the running of Jutteborg's Nya Brewery, Gothenburg's new brewery. But this particular brewery was founded back in 1994, and they're quite interesting because they have four big German copper kettles, which apparently date back from 1957, and these actually allow them to produce around 600,000 litres of beer per year, but the brewers have to learn some quite special techniques to actually operate this brew kettle properly so you will always get some very kind of unique and quite interesting things out of uh, out of this brewery but the current head brewer from what I gather is Johan Hansen and he joined the company back in 2007 and he's now joined by Christopher Olsen and Eric Olberry as well um, I've got a feeling that um, Johan Hansen may very recently have moved on from the brewery and it's now Christopher Olsen who's doing a lot of the, the, the brews but it's quite difficult to find information on this brewery to be honest I messaged them through Facebook the first time I did a review from them and didn't get a reply and I had a little new look at um, beernews.sa as well to see what they were doing but um, they were just, you know, it was just, uh, there wasn't anything overly new about these guys. It said that in the last year they produced somewhere in the region of around 140,000 litres of beer, something like that. Um, but yeah, a very small company, these guys. There's around 400 craft breweries in Sweden these days so it's a bit difficult even for the, the, uh, the, the beer newspapers and things like that to keep track of what's going on at all of these breweries but um, yeah another very small one and like I say if you get the chance to try the Lunator I do recommend that you have a go at that but it's always cool to try different beers from breweries that are famous for certain things but yeah that's all you really need to know about Grebestad's Brewery just now hopefully I can review more beers from them in the future but if you want to learn more check out the brewery website in the description below and as always you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well but yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself so as you can see um, nicely presented beer this one you can see that sort of coastal theme to it, you know, Grevestad is right on the, the west coast of Sweden, and Sweden of course has a big maritime association, you know, going back to the Vikings and things like that. There you can see at the top there, Bohuslän. Nicely presented beer, as you can see, quite classic actually. And there you can see the lighthouse is also on uh, the bottle cap of this one too. Um, 
but um, yeah, it basically says a nice special stout brewed with lactose. So yeah, on the back it says um, in the the Bohus Lane area lies Grebestad, uh, just a few meters from the the shore. If you like, you can find our brewery. Uh, this this gold recognised or uh, gold, gold awarded rather gold gold medalled beer is. Um, very tasty, it's got a sweet stout that has a fantastic balance between roasted malt, a caramel base uh, that ends with uh, milk sugar for a for a new height, if you like, it's kind of saying. I'm not sure if I've translated that quite right, but like I say, a 5% milk stout, this one. This is a brewery that does have a reputation for dark beers from what I gather. I'm wondering if this is the third incarnation of this beer, because it does have the little Roman numeral 3 on the back. For those of you that are Swedish speakers, you can have a little read at this and see if I have butchered the translation. I think I got the second part right, but the first part not as good. Um, but yeah, as I say, nicely presented beer this one. I do like that, how on the little top label they have the the German um, kettles, because that is the symbol of the brewery. Like I was saying, the brewers have to learn how to use these. Those German brew kettles apparently date back from like 1957 or something like that. But um, yeah, it looks very nice. Nicely presented beer, this one. A style that I very much enjoy. Let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. So yeah, if we're talking about milk stouts, probably my favourite sweet stout that I had was... Um, Riptide from Brewdog, that was the one that probably got me started on this particular style of beer and since then that one has kind of been the one that stuck in my mind. Um, chocolate Milk Stout from the... oh there's a brewery in, Atla in, uh, in Georgia, that it was the Turtle Brewery or something like that they were called. Uh, they all, that was a beautiful beer that one I have to say. But yeah, you always get some really nice sweet stouts and it's a style of beer that I really have to admit. Uh, I do enjoy. But yeah, as you can see and as you would expect from this beer, it's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. You can see there's about a half finger of a frothy, I would say medium beige head on this one, definitely beige rather than tan. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this one is pretty damn opaque to be honest, but I think that is probably down more to the colour rather than anything else. If you hold this beer up towards the light, you can see that there's an element of a ruby edge in there. If you, There is a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola edge to this beer too. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how well you're going to see that on the camera, but definitely some nice kind of Coca-Cola coloured edges to this one and a little bit of a ruby uh, colour to it overall. But yeah, looks pretty much as you would expect from a sweet stout, uh, so nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. And when you're moving the beer around, you really can smell some of these quite syrupy and toasty brown sugars. There's a little bit of the, the chocolatey notes coming out of there, but you can smell some of that nice lactosey sweetness as well. But let's take a closer look at that aroma and just see how we get on then. Oh yeah. I can see what they mean on the label about this beer being balanced. That really is quite a lovely aroma. It almost smells a little bit like um, toast with salted butter. Um, it really does remind me of that, of the toast. Like my dad, um, you know, my dad's not the best cook, let's say that. He could burn water. Um, but you know, it really smells like his toast. He always used to toast, uh, to toast his bread and it would come out uh, carbonated basically um, and it, it really reminds me actually his toast my dad does like it, it, this beer really does smell something akin to a, a buttered piece of quite well fired toast to be honest with you it smells like my dad's toast this beer so yeah you can smell the lovely sweetness of the lactose sugars in this one a sweet kind of milky chocolate in there at the same time you've got a little bit of a um, you do have a little bit of a darker high cocoa chocolate in there um, so you can pick out with this beer that there's a nice brown sugar element underneath there is a bit of a sweet caramel to this one but at the same time quite well toasted it reminds me a little bit of a well fired bread crust to be honest if you think a little bit about German bread um, and some of the ones that have the darker crusts that's what this really reminds me, reminds me of along with my dad's um, burnt toast that he used to try and feed me um, so yeah, it's a lovely, you know, they're saying on the back of this uh, bottle that it's all about the balance and really I think this is quite a unique aroma for a sweet stout. It really does have a good roasty presence to it. 
um, but it's also got the sweetness on top, the chocolate, the lactose and a bit of that brown sugar actually, it really just smells like a nice big slightly toasted bread crust, this beer. Um, a little bit of earthiness from the hops, you can pick up a very slight hint of an earthy, sort of grassy kind of thing in there. Maybe a little touch of a very light candied red fruit, but the aroma in this beer is all about those big malty elements that I was talking about. So with this beer in particular, do take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it. It is very unique actually for, um, for a sweet stout, so yeah, do take a little bit of time with it. So yeah, let's have a taste of this beer then and see how we get on. This one is the Milk Stout from Grebestad's Brewery in Boris Lane, a little bit to the north of Gothenburg, very close to the Norwegian border on the west coast of Sweden. Quite rare to see this brewery releasing another beer, so hopefully it is a really good one. Let's get stuck in the Milk Stout from Grebestad's Brewery in Boris Lane on the west coast of Sweden. Slange, skull. Yeah, that's really nice actually. Um, again, it kind of this is one of these beers where it tastes very similar to the aroma, and that's a good thing. This one is definitely one of these beers that is all about the balance, but the balance in this beer is actually, you know, so unique that. Um, the balance in this beer is just is so unique that you're not going to find anything quite like that from any other beers, as far as I, as far as I can tell. I mean, we're talking about seventeen hundred reviews now. I don't think I've ever come across a sweet stout that's quite like this one. Yeah. So you can feel that nice, well toasted bread crust quality that just blankets the middle of your palate. And the further that you go into the aftertaste with this beer, the more it sweetens up. That toasty bread crust quality that's forming the linchpin of the beer just happens to smooth out a little bit. And um, it works, it really does work very well actually. Yeah, it's interesting because that Toasty bread crust flavour, that just blankets the middle of your palate, goes right across the um, middle of your tongue. You've got a little bit of a breadiness um, kind of sitting in there on top of that. It's almost like a, a sort of German brown bread or something like that. In the very centre of your palate, you've got a nice little bit of a an almost toasty um, caramel there. It's got a bit of a brown sugar to it and it is quite a well toasted one there. It gets a little bit sweeter and more syrupy the more the, the more central you go into your palate but the chocolatey notes to this beer are just kind of sitting um, around that and it's quite a milky chocolate. The lactose in this beer and the chocolatey elements really are mixing together so you've got this toasty roasty bread base, you've got a bit of the, the chocolatey and lactose thing just kind of sitting on top of that and right in the very centre of your palate it's more of a a slightly sweet but still well fired brown sugar note that comes out of this one. Yeah. You know, I've said it a couple of times in this video, but when they're saying that this beer is all about how the flavours are balanced, they certainly weren't kidding. This is a really quite unique beer, this one, and I'm sure I said the same about the um, the Lunator as well. These guys, I think, uh, I heard from some people that these guys were particularly good when it comes to the dark beers, and this kind of reinforces that uh, that statement actually that I've heard. So yeah, if you like sweet stouts, then have a go at this one. It's certainly going to give you quite an interesting experience. Now, I would say that this is one of these beers that isn't overly bold in terms of its flavour. You know, this is a sort of, I would kind of term it as being a sort of restauranty type beer. It's not one of these big kind of candied sweet things that you're going to get from the likes of Omnipoi or something. This is definitely one, more, one of these beers that's all about the kind of food pairing or the restaurant-y experience. It's not one of these beers that's kind of punching out there to try and be very, very bold. It is about just the nice um, balancing aspect, if you like. So bear that in mind if you are going to try this one. Um, but yeah, the malt base in this, I really like how this goes together. On the hoppy side of things then, you've got a nice 
um, slightly smooth earthiness there. It has a little bit of bitterness in the back corners of the palate, but it really smooths out as you kind of come further forward. And um, there's a little bit of a floral aromaticity there towards the front corners of the tongue. I would wonder with this beer if they've added one of the German noble hops. You know, perhaps it could be Styrian Goldings or Czech Sats as well. Um, but a hop along the lines of Tetnang or Hallertau Sats or uh, Styrian Goldings is in here to, to smooth the beer out. But you've got that really nice little bit of grassiness there around the front curve of the palate too you can feel this one just drying out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste and those sort of toasty bread crusty notes pushing their way out the further you go into the aftertaste with the beer. But yeah, the fruity side of this beer is quite nice too. It's a little bit of an almost black curranty um, flavour. I mean, it's got a little touch of a figgy note to it, but I'd say it's more of a kind of black currenty uh, quality that comes out of this beer. A little bit of a candied red strawberry almost, like the Haribo Star Mix sweets. You get that little oily bubble just behind the front curve of your tongue there, and that's where the fruity, juicy esters start to come out of the beer. And it really, to me, comes across as a sort of blackberry, black currantish um, type flavour, this one actually. It's, it's, it, this beer has a lot of uh, complexity to it for a beer that's so light in alcohol. Um, it is more of a traditional stout, this one, rather than being one of the more kind of bold American stouts, but it really works very well in my opinion. So have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. It's a nice, light, kind of fairly easy drinking stout. This, this would be nice actually with a little bit of chocolate or vanilla ice cream, even just a dark piece of chocolate. This beer would go quite well with actually. Mm. So yeah, definitely not the sweetest of milk stouts that you're going to come across, but definitely one of the most, uh, one of the best, well balanced ones, most well balanced ones that I've come across in the six years or so that we've been that I, I've been doing the channel. So thumbs up to Gravestad's Brewery for this one. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. I like how they've pulled this one off. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I'd say this beer is at the kind of bottom end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is very smooth in this one. Um, I don't know if you should expect a, a milk stout to be a bit creamier than this. This one has more of a wet mouthfeel. Maybe even it's a touch oily, but to me mainly more of a wet mouthfeel rather than anything else. Um, in terms of hoppy bitterness, I think you're talking about 30 IBUs again with this beer, maybe 20, there's really not a lot of IBU to this beer. The malt base really has a beautiful balance between the roasty side of things, you've got the sweetness from the, the caramel and also the smoothness from that bready element to the beer as well. Um, nice, as I say, the hoppy bitterness isn't too high in this and you've also got a nice fruity edge to this beer at the end, it's quite an unusual black currenty. Um, blackberry-ish type flavour that you get out of this beer. But overall, a really, really nice milk stout. Definitely one of the most unusually balanced ones that I've come across over the last little while. The bready notes in this and the bread crusty flavours that I'm talking about are what make this beer particularly unique. So if you get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you do. It is one that is going to test your palate a little bit, but it's a lovely Lovely beer, and I need to keep out uh, an eye out for say, for something else from Grebestad in the fairly new future. But this was released on the second of May, if I remember correctly, through Seaston Balaget here in Sweden and through the local and small assortments, and it's definitely worth checking out. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this beer then. This one is the Milk Stout from Grebestad's Brewery in Boys Lane, a little bit to the south of the Norwegian border on the west coast of Sweden. A really interesting beer, this one. I've enjoyed reviewing it for you, so I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it as well. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Grebestad's Bravery as well, and I'm sure we'll return to these guys at some point fairly soon. Hopefully, there's a few more beers that we can have a taste of. So thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Milk Stout from Grebestad's Brewery uh, in Boislein on the west coast of Sweden. Slandia, skull.